are going to stand and open up with hymn number 138, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Please join me in our call to worship and prayer of the day. And this prayer will be read responsibly. I will read the parts in light, and you will respond with what is in bold. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. From you, O Lord, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. I have set the Lord before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices, for you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life, in your presence there is fullness of joy, at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Good and wonderful God, Lord, we come here and we gather today in your house as your children, Lord, seeking your blessing. And we come to praise your holy name, Lord, to join all the stars of heaven, Lord, all of creation as it sings out, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. 
Father, we know that you alone are holy. You alone are worthy and deserving of our praise and honor. And it is your blessing and your blessing alone that we come to seek. Father, we ask that you would place your hand upon us. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Open our hearts and minds that we would see and that we would know your presence and that we would be transformed by your mighty, by your loving, and by your merciful presence within our hearts. Father, guide us in what we say and what we speak, Lord, even down to the depths of our feeling, that we might give you the honor and praise that you deserve. And all God's people said, Amen. We are going to continue standing and singing. All the people said, Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. It is great to see all of you here in the house of our God and King on this the day that the Lord has made. Let us truly rejoice and be glad in it. I welcome all of you here in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glad you decided to join us here for uh, Sunday worship, whether you're with us here in person or, or watching it live or a little later in the day or the week. Um, if you are with us here in person, uh, here in this bulletin will be everything that you need to know to follow along with the service. Everything you need to sing and to say along with us is printed right here. Um, if you're watching it, um, everything you need to know is going to appear at the screen at the right time. However, you can also download the uh, bulletin from the comments section on Facebook if you so desire. Um, there are a few announcements I would like to quickly bring uh, to your attention. Uh, we have small groups that are uh, gearing up in full throttle now this week um got them for all people for all ages uh first one is our youth small group meets tonight at five o'clock here at the church that is for all middle and high school youth 5 p.m tonight here at the church um our theology on tap discussion group is getting started back this week that's going to be uh, monday tomorrow night at 6 30 at the crafty draft brew pub and we're going to continue our discussion of c.s lewis's mere christianity and it's always a great discussion we invite you to join us 6 30 uh, Monday night at Crafty Draft Brew Pub. Uh, single ladies are going to be meeting at uh, on the 28th of this month. That's at Papa Gio's. Uh, for more information, you can contact Harris Murray 
And we also have the men. Our uh, small group is going to get started back this week as well. Uh, that's going to be this Wednesday, uh, 7 o'clock right here at the church uh, for all men. Uh, we're going to be starting John MacArthur's 12 Ordinary Men. Uh, wonderful study, a, a, a character to study of the apostles. Um, invite all men to join us. Um, if you could please let John know if you do plan to come so we can prepare for food because um, we're going to be providing dinner as well. Um, our Valentine's uh, Day dinner is going to be uh, February the 11th. That's going to be at the, um, the canning station where we did it last year, if you all remember. It's just down the road here. It's a nice, cozy little place. We had a great time. And um, it's going to be at 530. That's, I think this is a Saturday, the 11th. And um, $40 a couple, $20 an individual. Um, it's, uh, we have a great time, awesome company. And all the money that we raise is going to be used to fund our uh, youth mission trip this summer. And I promise you, you're not going to find a Valentine's dinner any cheaper than 40 bucks a couple and $20 a person. So we invite you all to come out, whether it's a couple or by yourself. We all have a great time. And um, as all in celebration of love, and we all love each other here, right? Or at least we say we do. Yeah, okay. Nod your heads. Yep, yep, we do. Uh, if you'd like, you like to come with us uh, for this Valentine's, we have tickets that are on sale in the hallway uh, right after church. Um, there's also a pants drive for Centerville Elementary School. Um, they're saying there are a lot of kids that um, need some long pants uh, to get them through the winter. Um, that's all kinds, jeans, leggings, sweatpants, and they need all sizes from 4T all the way to 1416. And if you'd like to help us out with that, we got a basket on the table in the hallway, um, and that's going to be going at least for is that another week, Lauren? At least, yeah, at least another week. So please try to remember that. Uh, bring some pants this way to uh, Centerville. They really need it there. And um, also, I'd finally like to mention, uh, Kelly Smith called me this morning. As you all know, Tim Smith, if you need orientation, he sits over here. Um, had surgery this week, and, um, and a lot have been expressing your concern and prayers. Uh, Kelly wanted me to let you know that the surgery went fine. He is recovering well, and she wants to thank everybody for your prayers, um, for your concern, and for your support at this time. And that's just a great way that we can be the kingdom of God and the body of Christ to each other. We appreciate that, and Kelly appreciates it well. And now I do not think we have any other announcements, so I would like to invite, if we have any kids here, invite them forward and also like to invite Bob and Kathy Johnson to come forward and join me here at the baptismal font. And Jimmy, you too. Yeah. Hey Scott, you want to sit right there? We're going to have you right here today, buddy. All right. Yeah, right here. There you go. Mm -hmm. In between there. So we can get you on the camera. That's what we need now. You don't need me. You're getting me enough in it. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. Yeah, come join. All right, kids, how are y'all today? Amazing. Um, amazing. Oh, man, you got all the all superlatives today. That's great. That's great. Well, I'm going to introduce you to some new family members today. I, I bet you didn't know that Bob and Kathy here are family, did you? But we're all here part of one big church family. We're all united and made one family through the blood of Jesus Christ. And the fact that God is our father, Christ is our older brother, and that we are all one family in Jesus Christ. And this is a joyous occasion here today because we are here to receive some new members. And I've had just a great time getting to know uh, Bob and Kathy both. Um, and I know y'all are going to have a great time to get to know them as well. I know they're going to just fit in great here at Cherokee as they continue their, their life in ministry and their life here with us. So I'm telling you today that Bob and Kathy Johnson are presented by session to be received as new members through transfer of letter through Sycamore Presbyterian. We rejoice that you are here to share with us in the work of ministry and the life of worship as we seek to do God's will and to share his love with the whole world. Here are these words from our Lord from the book of Ephesians. You are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. On behalf of the session of Cherokee Presbyterian, I present Bob and Kathy Johnson to be received by transfer of letter. Bob and Kathy, these are the questions that I have for you. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Amen. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, 
Share in his worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Congregation, do we, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture these, your servants, by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging them to know and follow Christ, and to be faithful members of his church? If so, answer, we do. Let us pray. Good and heavenly Father, thank you, both Bob and Kathy. I thank you for the, all the ways that you have blessed them, and I pray a divine anointing be upon them both by the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray as you bind them, Lord, to your own body and to yourself, that you could bind them to us. I pray that their life and their ministry and their work would continue in Christ Jesus here, and they find their place, Lord, as they have found their place in you. Lord, bless them and bless us all, and may we continue in the good work of Jesus Christ until the day comes when you would all gather us unto yourself again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And, and as a sign of your joining with us as a congregation, we ask that you sign our book of membership here. And now let us all stand together and with our new members say what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And you can find those words printed in your bulletin. Friends, what is it you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And don't forget, after the service, go, up, go and find Mom and Kathy and welcome, welcome them personally to our new church family. And kids, y'all can go back to Kids Church. Friends, to truly be received into Christ's body requires that we first admit that we are sinners. That we are sinners and there is nothing that we can do under our own power, under our own effort, under our own righteousness that we can ever save ourselves. But we must fully and completely and totally for the entirety of our life rely fully on God's saving grace. And with this confession, we receive the mercy of God. So friends, let us continue to confess our sins to God. Let us do so together, first in quiet reflection in our hearts and to God alone, and then together as it's printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. And now together. Forgive me, O Lord, for my sin is great before you. In hardness of heart, I have refused to be shaped by your hand. In the stubbornness of my will, I have insisted on living my own way. In pride and vanity, I have made an idol of myself and turned from the worship 
of the true God. Forgive me, God, and make me whole again. Return to the temple of my heart as God and Lord and King. Rule over me that I may serve you. Make me your child, redeemed, restored, and made in your image. In Christ Jesus, amen. Friends, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. We are now going to stand and continue singing devotion.
Please be seated. Our scripture passage today is from the gospel according to Matthew. We're at chapter 5, verses 1 to 12, and this is the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount and the, uh, the part of that beginning sermon that we know as the Beatitudes. Uh, before we read this, let us pause for a moment and bow our heads in prayer. Good and Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you have given us your holy word. We thank you that by the power of your spirit, you inspired the prophets and the apostles, Lord, to write these things to us, that they might be given to us for our instruction, Lord, for our guidance, Lord, for our knowledge that we may know you and know our Savior. Father, we also know that unless that same spirit inspires us today that inspire these words, Lord, that we would understand nothing. So we pray your Holy Spirit be breathed upon us, Lord, in our minds and in our hearts, that we may hear, that we may read, that we may understand your good and perfect will for us. Lord, bless this holy reading of your holy word. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Listen now to the word of the Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil and false, false, all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I heard a story uh, a few years back about a guy, he was, it was, he was getting married, he was at his wedding, right, and, and he had really anticipated the wedding gift that he was going to get from his uncle. See, he was one of these guys that had the, a rich uncle, and this uncle didn't have any other children, so he loved to just dote on his nephews and nieces, and this man had seen the gifts that his uh, cousins had gotten for weddings, and they were, I mean, like good wedding gifts. Like a, like a set of silverware, like real silverware, like made of silver. I mean, like a whole set of that. Uh, another cousin had gotten a new bedroom set. Um, another cousin had gotten his honeymoon paid for by this wealthy uncle. So this man on his wedding day, he just couldn't wait to see what it was his uncle was going to give him. And his, his new bride, and they were together, and they were opening the presents. And he finally got to his uncle's, and he was so excited, he tore into it. And then he looked down and he saw a Bible. And I can't tell you how disappointed he was. His uncle had given him a Bible for a wedding present. And all those just great gifts that he had thought of, just, oh man, it was just his hopes had dashed. And he looked at the Bible and there was nothing really in the Bible except a little note attached. And said, don't forget to read your Bible. There are great blessings within. In his disappointment, he just put the Bible aside. And, and to kind of compound it, his disappointment, every time he saw his uncle at every Thanksgiving or Christmas or family event, his uncle would come up to him and say, So, you've been reading your Bible? You know, there's great blessings within. Yeah, 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 I've been reading my Bible. Of course, he hadn't touched the Bible. 
sitting on a shelf somewhere gathering dust. And it gathered dust for years and years, and his uncle's still asking him every so often, so you've been reading your Bible, you know there's great blessings within. Never did crack that Bible open. He never could get rid of the feeling that he had been cheated on his gift. That his other cousins had been blessed so much better than he had been blessed. So I want to ask you, and y'all are good Christian folks right here, here at church on a cold rainy day, which one is the greater blessing? The set of silverware or our new, new, new bedroom suite or, or a Bible? I think you know the answer, right? You know what, at least what you're supposed to say, right? Oh, of course it's the Bible. The Bible is the word of God given to us. What greater blessing is there than that? Except as people, we've got this chronic flaw in us and we're unable to see a real blessing sometimes when it's staring us right in the face. I mean, admit it, admit it. How many of you, given the choice, would take the silverware or the, the new bedroom furniture over a Bible? How many of us really recognize it for the blessing that it is? How many of you would feel cheated like this man here if you received this nominally smaller gift than the bigger ones your cousins received? In fact, most of our energy in our life today is set into pursuing not heavenly but earthly blessings. Most of our effort and energy is put into achieving comfort and ambition or, or maybe our little 15 seconds of fame that we might achieve. I think most of all, most of our energy and efforts put into finding our little pleasures and whatever money we can amass as we live here on planet Earth, whatever entertainments and enjoyments we can gain for ourselves, whatever nest egg of wealth that we can build up as most as we possibly can. I mean, how many of us really pursue the godly blessings? How many of us take our time to pursue knowing God, to pursue knowing Him, to pursue being known by Him? Why is it do we have such a hard time seeing the real blessings before us and being blinded by the flashy earthly blessings? Now, most of us, if you ask the question, would probably say it's a problem of desire. Our desires are bad. We have too much desire. We don't have enough self-control. Now, the Christian theologian C.S. Lewis had an interesting take on that. He said it wasn't we have too much desire. He says we have too little or it's not that our desires are too strong, it's that our desires are too weak, and so we desire after weak things. This is what he said in, the, in his book, The Weight of Glory. Our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us. We are like ignorant children who want to go on making mud pies in a slum, because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far, far too easily pleased. So he says, not our desire is too strong, our desire is too weak. Here, God's glory is offering us this vacation at the sea, and instead we're saying, no, nah, I'm going to play with these little mud pies in the slum. I'm going to take these over the greater blessing that God has to offer me. So why is it we desire the wrong things? Why is it we get so excited about earthly blessings when we're receiving them and we fail to even pay attention to the heavenly ones? And we, and we know the heavenly ones are better. I mean, we know it. I mean, just, just look at them. Look in, here in the, in the Beatitudes today. As a, you know, when Jesus spoke these blessings he was going to give us. I mean, just look at how good these are. I mean, these are fantastic blessings. There's like... We get to have the kingdom of heaven. We're going to be comforted, inheriting the earth, being satisfied, seeing God, being called sons of God, having a great reward in heaven. I mean, these are good blessings. I mean, there's really nothing that the earth or the world can give us in comparison. And we know they're better. We know they're better, so how can we possibly desire an earthly blessing over a heavenly one. 
why would we commit so much of our energy in a blessing that fails and getting mud pies and God's offering us a holiday at the sea? Now, part of the problem, I'll admit, and this is an admitted problem, is we can't really see those heavenly blessings yet. Right? Earthly blessings are right here in front of our face. They're ones that we can take hold, we can grab, and, and even more, we can enjoy them right now. I mean, the heavenly blessings, they take a little bit of faith to pursue because they're coming much, much later on in life or even in our existence. But a heavenly blessing, we can see that they are, I mean, I'm sorry, the earthly ones, are. we can see that they're here and they're here right now. And moreover, we can see our neighbor really enjoying those blessings while we don't enjoy them near as much as they do. And so these are things that we can take hold and have of right now. And that's true, a problem. That's one reason why we pursue the earthly over the heavenly. But I think there's something else at work here. I think there's some other reason why we hesitate to really pursue the blessings that God wants to give us. And a big part of it is we're not really sure we want to be the people that God is asking us to be. I'm not talking about good people. We all want to be good people, but when we break it down and we see exactly who it is God is asking us to be, that's when we start to hesitate. We, we look at these incredible blessings that God is giving us, then we look at the kind of person that is being blessed, and that's when we pause and say, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm, I want the blessing and everything. That'd be great, but I'm not sure I want to be this kind of person. And let, let me tell you what I mean. Look, look, at, look at what I mean, okay? Look down here at this, the Beatitudes, this passage we read. We see the blessings here, but these blessings are given to a specific kind of person. And we look at the kind of people that are given these, and these are not necessarily desirable traits as our world sees desirable traits. I mean, the very first one, blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, we don't like the word poor, period, in anything. That already has kind of got us turned off a little bit. But this says poor in spirit. Now poor in spirit means somebody who is acutely aware of their spiritual poverty. That they are acutely aware of the need that they have. That they have this deep hunger and this need and they know they cannot satisfy it by themselves. Another word of saying it is humble. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the humble. Now, if there's a word that we hate more than poverty, it might be humility. No one likes being humble. Right? We like to think of ourselves as great or awesome or just God's gift to humanity. But he's asking us to be small, to have little self-esteem, to always be in the background, always being the chorus. Nobody wants to be humble. And all the others aren't any better. He asks us, he says, blessed are those who mourn. Mourn, well, that sounds depressed to me. The meek, well, that's just a doormat for the world. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, that sounds like a ticket to nowhere in life for sure. Merciful, it's an invitation to be taken advantage of by everybody. Pure in heart, well, that's holier than thou, and frankly, a little bit boring if you ask me. Peacemakers, a bunch of tree-hugging hippies persecuted that's an extremely unhealthy lifestyle no one should want that reviled hated lied about even if it's for the sake of christ okay that sounds like reject and loser i mean if we're honest that's kind of how it sounds i mean it's not very enticing i mean who would in our honest of honest thoughts with ourselves wants that for our life in fact, what the world tells us to desire is the exact opposite of everything that Jesus has mentioned here. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit. We want to be proud. He says, blessed are those who mourn. We want to be happy. Blessed are those who, who are meek. We prefer to be bold, if you ask us personally. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. But we're told we need to hunger and thirst for success. Blessed are the merciful. Well, we prefer revenge for our enemies, or at least enough to teach people that they can't mess with us. Blessed are the pure in heart. I'd rather follow my desires. Blessed are the peacemakers. 
Nah, we need to stir the pot every now and then. Blessed are the persecuted. No, I'd rather be on top. That's where we're supposed to be. Blessed are the insulted and the reviled and the lied about for the sake of Christ. Are you kidding me? I want to be loved by everybody. I want to be the talk of the town. I want my name to be on everyone's lips and them say nothing but good things about me behind my back. I think this is a huge barrier that keeps us from pursuing these blessings is we're not sure if we want to be that kind of people. In fact, it's a lot easier to just, well, be that kid playing with the mud pies. I mean, a trip to the coast sounds nice and everything, but gosh, that's a lot of work. I got to rent a place down there. I got to pack the car, make the whole trip. It's going to cost a lot of money. Got to ask y'all for work. No. You know, the mud pies are right here. I'm right here. We a little bit lazy? Yeah. A little bit content with who we already are. Maybe scared of change. Maybe scared of that great unknown of what a vacation at the coast really means when a familiar life is right here, safe and comfortable at our feet. And not to mention, if you look around, the people that Jesus is talking about, this, this meek and lowly and mournful people, they're not the ones who get blessed in the world I know. They're not the ones that get blessed when I look around and see the successful and blessed people. It's not the meek who get what they want. It's the bold. It's not the humble who get ahead in life. It's the proud. It's not the merciful or the pure or the persecuted or the peacemakers who come out on top. It's the ambitious and the opportunistic and the strong and the popular. These are the people who get blessed. So why would Jesus ask me to be what well, looks like a bottom feeder? Why would Jesus ask me to be a loser? That's what it kind of sounds like he's asking us. He's asking me to be persecuted, to be meek, to be humble, to be little, to be a nobody, to be weak. We know that's not the truth. We know that is not what Jesus is asking us at all. In fact, he's asking you to be stronger than you want to be. He's asking you to have more strength in you than you even want to have for yourself. Because he's asking you to be so strong that you can follow the example of the Son of God. He's asking you to be so strong that you can follow the example of the Son of God who humbled himself so you could be saved. He's asking you to follow the example of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who made himself meek so that you could learn from him. He's asking you to follow the example of the King of Heaven and Earth who had the power to command angels at his side and he allowed himself to be persecuted until death so that you could have life. He's asking you to be like him. And this is not a path for the weak or the faint of heart. This is a path only for those of enduring faith. And his blessing is not for the weak either. You know, I think one of the other reasons we hesitate to pursue his blessing, like God's real blessing, I think deep down, deep down all of us know that we're not worthy. I think all of us know deep down that the blessing God wants to give us, these just extravagant blessings that he's promising us, deep down we know that we're too small to hold it. And that this blessing is too great for us. The Apostle Paul, he said in 2 Corinthians, that this slight momentary affliction of our life is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. But this momentary affliction that we're in now is preparing us for God's heavy, heavy blessing that he's going to lay upon us one day. And he says it as if, the way we are right now, that we're not ready for that blessing. 
that the way we are right now, the people the way we are right now, if God were to put that blessing on us right here in this moment, it is so great that it would break us into pieces. And much of what God does in our life is not to make us worthy of His blessing. It's to make us ready. And much of God's work in this life is not making us so that we're good enough or holy enough or pure enough to receive God bless, God's blessing, but that we are strong enough that we can bear up under the tremendous weight of glory. Because right now, well, we're just content with our mud pies, with our money and our stuff and our likes on social media. And Christ is waiting for us to hate these things. He's waiting for us to hate them and despise them as low and worthless. He's waiting so we can get to the point where when Paul, he said that he regards everything as garbage compared to the glories of knowing Christ Jesus as his Lord. He's waiting us to see what a real blessing is. He's waiting us to be in a place like the man who received a Bible for his wedding gift. And to be able to see that, the gift of the Word of God, as a real blessing. You know, it was actually a sad story about that guy. Because he kept that Bible for years and years with his uncle asking him at every holiday, you've been reading your Bible? You know, there's a great blessing inside. That Bible sat there on his shelf collecting dust until that uncle died. And out of, a, I guess, a fit of guilt, the guy decides to just crack it open in memory of his uncle. And he opened that Bible up in there, and the book of Genesis was a $100 bill. And kind of on a whim, on a hunch, he turned to Exodus, and there was another $100 bill. Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, all a $100 bill right where the book began. And he went through the entire Bible, and he found in front of every book in the Bible, there was a $100 bill waiting for him. Now, there's 66 books in the Bible. Who's good at math here? How much money is that? that... I'm not good at math. I need y'all to help me. I mean, $6,600. I would heard that right. $6,600 been sitting in that Bible for 20 years. His uncle had promised him there was a blessing for those who read their Bible. Now, the saddest part of this story is as, as this man sat here sitting at this pile of money in his Bible, he had this sense of regret that came over him. And it was not regret that he hadn't read his Bible. It wasn't even regret when he realized his uncle knew this whole time that he had never cracked open that Bible. That man sat there and had $6,600 in cash in his lap, and his biggest regret is he had missed out on all the interest that money could have collected over 20 years. Still wasn't ready for the real blessing. My friends, we'll be ready for God's greatest blessing when we see what is truly valuable in our life, in our world around us, and in the life of others. We're ready for God's true blessing when we regard everything as garbage when it's compared to Jesus Christ. We're ready for God's blessing when we see that mud pies is the best that our world has ever and can ever offer us in this life. We're ready for God's real blessing when we know the best thing a $100 bill can do is to be a bookmark for our Bible. Then we may be ready. But the real measure for us being ready for God's blessing is the way that He showed us Himself. Not only when we're humble, but when we love our humility. Not only when we're meek, but when we adore our meekness. Not only when we're merciful, but when we can't wait to show another person mercy. When we're proud of our weakness. When we boast in our suffering. When we rejoice whenever we were hated, reviled, or persecuted for the sake of of our Lord Jesus, that is when we are ready to see the face of God. 
To God be all the glory forever and ever. Amen. My friends, will you pray with me? Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. Lord, you have given us and promised us so many true blessings. You have given us so much, Lord, that, that we have seen and can't hold, and you have given us much more that we have yet to see and we have yet to take hold of. And Lord, you have given us so much we don't even realize. And Lord, you have put blessings in our path, Lord, that we have not fully grasped yet the enormity of their gift. You have given us, Lord, not only life, you have given us your love, you have given us your guidance, you have given us your holy word, you have given us, Lord, your, your affection and your approval for us. You have given us your Holy Spirit. You have given us your Son. And Lord, even though we are here to celebrate those today, perhaps we've heard it so much that we've forgotten what an incredible blessing it is. We've forgotten how amazing it is to know you and to be known by you, to be loved by you. Lord, our eyes have grown dim and they have been taken in by just the, the bright gifts of this world, Lord. Our eyes have grown dim and unable to see the great blessing that you have given us of other people in our life. Lord, our family, our friends, our church family. And Lord, that truly is the most wonderful blessing we have here on earth. And I pray, Lord, that you give us eyes to see what truly matters. That you give us eyes to see what is a truly a blessing in our life. And give us the ability to embrace your blessing and to embrace your will. To make us, Lord, people that are poor in spirit. To make us people who mourn. Make us, Lord, those who are meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Lord, give us hearts that are merciful. Give us hearts that are pure. Lead us to be peacemakers in our world. Lord, give us the strength to be persecuted for righteousness' sake. And to be persecuted for the sake of your Son. Help us, Lord, have hearts that will rejoice and be glad and open themselves wide to the blessing that you will give us. And Father, we come to you in prayer to ask your blessing for this world and for those who need it. We ask you, Lord, for your blessing upon this violent world that you would show us the ways of peace. We pray especially for those that have been affected by the shooting of L.A. this morning. That you would comfort those people, Lord, and lead for healing to our community, Lord. And Father, give us the kind of hearts that turn away from violent answers and violent solutions. Father, we lift up our children to you and our families and pray that you would guard us and guide us and protect us, Lord, and lead us upon the path of righteousness and goodness. Father, we ask for those who need healing. We lift up to you, Tim and Bill. Lift up to you, Sharon and Allison and Jerry and Cindy and Nell and Peepsy and Betty. And pray your healing strength and power be upon them. We lift up to you, Lord, all those who grieve. Today, Lord, we remember the Rex Newman family and pray that you would grant them your comfort and peace as only your spirit can give. And Father, we remember all the ways that you have blessed us. And we thank you for new life. Lord, I especially, Lord, thank you that uh, you have given new life to my nephew Pearson and the new life that he is invited in this world and his son Quinn. And we just thank you that life does continue and your blessings do continue. And I pray that you would bless their family. Father, I pray that you would hear the silent cries of our hearts, Lord, and that you would hear the silent prayers that are offered here in this moment today. And we ask all these things in the name of your Son, our Savior, Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, truly the blessing that God has given us is one that cannot be measured. His abundance is without end. But what our Lord asks of us is that we give back to Him a small portion of what He has given to us that we would support the work of His church in this world. Um, if you'd like to give to the work here at Cherokee Presbyterian, there are many ways that you can give. Uh, we have offering plates on either sides of the door as you exit the sanctuary. You can also give through Venmo, PayPal, ACH Bank Draft, or through the United States Postal Service. And we thank you for all the ways that you support the work here at Cherokee Presbyterian. And now in response of thanksgiving that all that God has given us, let us stand and sing together the doxology. Let us pray. Great and merciful Father, we come to you today and we bring these gifts, Lord, giving back to you just a small portion of the great abundance that you have blessed us with. Lord, I pray that you would bless both the gift and the giver, and these gifts we bring to you today would be used for the advancement of your kingdom until your Son returns to us again to acclaim all things once again as his own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to remain standing and sing hymn number 356, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. My friends, receive the blessing of God and receive His will for your life, being continually transformed by the power of His Spirit. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in the insurance of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. <laughs> 